and welcome. So today, joined again by my friend Matt Collette. If you don't know Matt, he is a mortgage officer with SWBC. Longtime friend of mine. We go back to freshman year of high school swim team. Yeah. And um, he's a real estate investor. So bringing a unique uh, perspective really to this conversation about a specific property that uh, that's currently on the market listed as it relates to a income producing property. So uh, Matt, how are things? How are things in your world? Hey, things are good, man. Um, you know, we just had a nice Halloween, kind of different this year for sure. But uh, uh, yeah, things are good. You know, I just had surgery a week ago, so I'm recovering from that. So I had to, uh, you know, say no to the Halloween candy, which is probably for the best. But uh, um, yeah, man, I can't complain. Well, good. Well, it's uh, it's good to see you here. I'm sure the recovery is going well. Anytime you're not eating a lot of sugar is probably a good thing. <laughs> exactly. Say no to big sugar, right? Yeah, I think our, our mutual friend Colby, who's been on a couple of these, would, would agree. Sugar's not good for your health. No, definitely not, man. For sure. Yeah, Colby's got got all the info on that stuff for sure, man. <laughs> yeah, so with um, with that, though, when you are eating candy, just curious, man, what, what's your go-to? What's your favorite? Uh, uh, if it's in the candy bowl, I'm going to take it. I, I probably can't say no to a, a fun-sized Butterfinger if I see it in the candy bowl, but... Uh, <laughs> I have to with the soft diet, that's for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, for sure. How about you, man? Uh, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Reese's. Uh, hard to pass up on the Reese's. In fact, that's my go-to when it comes to uh, Dairy Queen or any of that ice cream mix, right? Put that, that chocolate and peanut butter there in the ice cream, and, and I'm good to go. Whew, classic. It's so good. Uh, probably, probably a close second for me as well. Yeah. <laughs> So today, obviously, is election day. A um, lot of things happening. Now, uh, we, obviously, I, I started this conversation talking about the real estate and the investment. So we're not going to get into politics. That's not ours here. Uh, do you want to encourage everybody to get out and vote? Uh, so did you get out already? Did you drop off a ballot? Are you planning to get out and vote in person today? What's happening? Yeah, you know, I, I definitely filled out my ballot and uh, and was, was going to drop that in, but, you know, I may be a little bit paranoid. Um, I don't sign my with my middle name often. And so since it was there with sign with my middle name, I'm not happy with the signature that the way it looks. And so I'm going to just to, to be doubly sure I'm going to uh, go in person today and, uh, and, and fill out my ballot there because uh, that middle name looks pretty wonky. And, and if I was reviewing that, I'd be like, he didn't, he didn't sign that. So, <laughs> so that's my plan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, good. Well, again, encouraging everybody to get out. Do do your part. Vote. Um, be kind here to one another. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about real estate investing. Now, you you and I were chatting on a on a previous Facebook Live about real estate investing. You've done quite a bit and moving towards short term rentals, the Airbnbs, the VRBOs. Uh, but you've had multifamily homes in the past, right? Duplex, uh, some quads, right? Four units. Yeah. Uh, first invested property was a fourplex, and then uh, had uh, four. Uh, 1.4 duplexes. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, truth be told, when I bought my first house, I was 23 years old and talking to my real estate agent at the time, this is before I was in real estate, uh, told him what I was looking for. I was looking for a good real estate investment property. Now, in my mind, I was thinking I'm going to buy low and sell high and that's a good real estate investment. Now, that's, that's true. That is one part of real estate investing, yet there's another aspect of this that I truly miss that looking back on it, wow, I would have really have loved to have gone down this route and buy a duplex because um, I, I could live in one unit, rent out the other unit and have most or all of my mortgage paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, um, you know, that's, you know, I probably did it, you know, 75%, right. If you know, you can never do it perfect. And in hindsight, um, I, I agree with you, Matt. I would, I would have, you know, my bought my my primary residence. I still live in today. Um, you know, 11 years ago with my first house, and that's a single family home. And then I bought my fourplex and my duplexes and all that, all that stuff afterwards, which required quite a down payment. And that was uh, was was you know kind of the struggle is to get that down payment together. Uh, I would have not been able to take it a lot further if you know in the time in my 20s when I bought that single family home. 
I would have bought my prime area as a duplex. Uh, the occupancy of your um, purchase means a lot. And, and when you're buying an investment property duplex versus a primary um, duplex, you can, you can minimize the down payment, get better terms on your interest rate, and, uh, and have a rental unit already right there um, ready to move into that you can use uh, to help you qualify. So, you know, hindsight 2020 um, is a different market then. Uh, but that, you know, with the, with the affordability and with the way prices are these days, you know, that just seems like the, um, the most elegant, uh, if it's possible, um, the most elegant way to bridge that affordability gap if you're, you know, looking to acquire real estate. And, uh, and you know, I have a, a couple investment properties that, you know, one is down in Colorado Springs. And, you know, when you're, when you have to travel an hour and a half to go do anything to it, you know, it's a little bit more of a pain, whether, you know, rather than, you know, if you have a duplex primary residence, you, you got your eyes on that other unit 100% of the time, pretty much. So uh, it really fits nicely and uh, can help help you get some more favorable favorable terms and help pay that mortgage for you. Yeah, I, you know, when we look at duplexes, triplexes, and four units, you can buy them as an owner occupied. If you get more than you know four units when you're in five plus, now it's commercial. Things are a little bit different. So that's why you know we talk about duplex, triplex, and then quads. So uh, there, there's two main components to uh, to affordability that are different between my owner occupied and my uh, investment properties. One is my down payment. Two is my interest rate. So why is it that buying this as an owner occupied versus an investment property what are some of those advantages on down payment and then of course my interest rate yeah so you know down payment on a duplex in an investment property is gonna gonna run you probably around 25 percent of the purchase price which is a good chunk of change um if, if you buy it as a second home or excuse me not a second home if you buy it as a primary and uh and use a conventional mortgage that goes up to 10%. You know, you only have to come up with a 10% down. Um, if you buy it as a primary with FHA, three and a half percent down is all you need. And so, and then USDA, which there's an option for USDA. Um, we don't do too many USDA uh, deals. We'd have a great scenario desk that we can always run run certain scenarios by, but the USDA always has uh, has really low down payment options as well. And so, with this property that we're talking about here. Um, it looks like that it is in a qualified area for USDA as well. And so that can help with uh, minimizing that down payment. And, you know, if, if you tuned in last time, uh, access to capital is such is such a ticket to the game. I've, I've always thought that it was what kind of drove my real estate investing back when I was doing it a little more aggressively. And, uh, and, and being able to minimize the amount that you have to come to the table with by that amount is, um, is a game changer. And so anybody who is saying that they want to <clears throat> acquire real estate or, or look at doing that, um, you want to consider this pretty, um, pretty intensely to, to see if it might be a good option because um, preserving that capital is, uh, is so key with, um, with real estate investing. Yeah. And when we just, when we look at real estate investing or any investing, the, the, the magic of compound interest, so I can take the profits from this property, this duplex, triplex, this four unit, whatever this is, that's my primary residence. If I could have afforded, say, a $1,500 a month mortgage, and now I'm paying $300 a month out of pocket because the other side's collecting most of it, I could take that same $1,200 that I was would have been spending, right? In my mind, I've already spent it reinvest that into a fund to acquire more property, pay down the mortgage more, uh, set that aside so that I can go get another property, put that into my retirement account. Let's put it into my Roth yep. IRA, my 401k. Let's put it into the index fund, whatever that might be for you. Wow. Some options to take a look at compound interest to really have this thing grow exponentially. Yep, absolutely. You know, once you look at the cash flow and what that does of, you know, creating, you know, extra cash flow and, you know, everybody is different. And so, uh, you know, if, if you want to put that cash flow into buying another property or if you want to put that cash flow into a college fund, you know, my wife and I are, uh, are, you know, looking to have children here and, you know, college is expensive. And so um, definitely changed, you know, our priorities, you know, from when I was 25 years old 
and just looking to buy as much real estate as I could get my hands on. Um, but you know, it's still, it's just such a, um, a great thing to have is to have, uh, you know, that extra cash flow and to decide what you want to do with it. Yeah, without a doubt. So I'm going to, I'm going to add my, uh, my screen here so that folks can see what we're looking at. And, um, if you want to follow along, so this is, this is my website. This is our website. It's, uh, 212degreeteam.kw.com. Um, so I'll add that here as a banner there at the bottom. Here's our website if you wanted to pull up. So if you want to follow along with wherever you're at here right now, you just want to pop into a search bar. We're going to go out to 575 Woodward Avenue. This is in Keensburg, Colorado. Uh, Matt, how familiar are you with Keensburg? You know, I call out a native and I'm not too familiar. You know, you're going to have to... Tell me about Keensburg, man. Sounds like a, an awesome place. So Keensburg should be popular today. That's out by where the animal sanctuary is at. For all of you Tiger King fans, a lot of his tigers have ended up at this animal sanctuary. Um, I'm hearing that secondhand. I've never watched the show. Don't know anything about it. Apparently, you can buy tigers super cheap, and this guy bought a lot of them. That's, that's what I hear as well. I uh Watched it, gosh, it almost seems like five years ago because it was the beginning of the pandemic. But uh, yeah, and it seems like a little bit of a dream because he was buying a ton of tigers, you know, and I never really thought about that when I've always thinking buy real estate. So. <laughs> Here we go. Lose me for a minute. Yeah, just lost you for a second. All right. So this uh, duplex out here in Kingsburg. So if you look at, at a map, it's I-76 East. So you're going to get out, you know, past Commerce City. You're going to get out past Hudson. Kind of that next big exit is 76. So it's actually, it's right off the highway. It's good, convenient access if you don't mind being a little bit out of town. So this property here. Right. You can just kind of flip through the photos, take a look at um, at what's there. Currently listed at four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Now, uh, Matt, you're a mortgage broker, so you'll know this. How many homes, detached single family homes, are on the market at four twenty? I mean, practically none. You know, I mean, there it's 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 slim, slim, slim pickings. You know, if anything. Yeah, not, not very many. And everybody's kind of chasing that same price point. Mm -hmm. So here for 420,000, you're actually buying two homes for the price of one. So this is again, kind of where this gets exciting. So you can kind of read through, um, you know, this particular duplex, you can tell by looking at the pictures, it needs some exterior paint. When you get on the inside, I would put in uh, new flooring. Um, you know, the, this carpet is not my color for one. Um, and truth be told, as a as an investor, I also want to keep my costs down for future costs, right? Matt, you own some right. some properties. Carpet tends to get damaged pretty easy, doesn't it? Yep, it sure does. So if we flip around, replace this with some luxury vinyl plank or some luxury laminate, something that looks like hardwood floor. One, it's popular; people really like it. Two, it's super easy to clean. It's maintenance free for the most part. I mean, it's pretty easy to take care of and just look good for a long time. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if you look here, here, we've got the map as far as where Keensburg is at, we're past Lock Bowie, Hudson. It's right out there out on 76. So what I wanted to just drop to you on this for the, um, for my website, because it's going to be relevant for our future conversations is, what does my payment look like? Now, this is a general payment. This gets down to principal and interest. This isn't going to factor the taxes, insurance, HOA, et cetera. So uh, Matt, you said that, right, if we went with uh, an investment property, I've got to put 25% down. So here you can see it's $105,000 I'm going to have to put down on this property. And we're probably around for investment property. Would you say four and a quarter is accurate? Yeah, you know, you, you may get, be able to get a little bit better than that for sure. Um, but with the duplex, you know, you, you have to think about 
um, all the different variables uh, of, of compounding the pricing. And so yeah. uh, with, with the regulators, the, the pricing is, is very regulated. And, and the only way your interest rate can, can move up is with, you know, variables like an investment property versus a primary or, or then an investment property duplex versus an investment property, single family home duplexes have a uh, slightly higher interest rate as well. So um, I would say four, four and a quarter is pretty, is, is, is good. You could definitely get that and maybe a little bit better right now. And, and that's an investment property. If I'm doing owner occupied, you can see, you can just slide this around, get to, hey, if, the, if I'm a VA buyer, right? If I'm a, I'm a veteran and I can do zero down, you can see really here just what this, what this does. If I want to yeah. increase my down payments, you can really mess with that. So. Here's the the listing information, and this is what's in the uh, the MLS. We've got our price here. It's at four hundred and twenty thousand. Taxes are pretty cheap. It's it's fourteen hundred dollars for the year. Um, gosh, with some of these Denver prices, we're seeing some of that. Uh, about you know every two months, somebody's going to be paying fourteen hundred dollars a month in taxes. Yeah, yeah, those taxes are shooting up for sure. Yeah. So. What we have here, so this was the lower unit on this duplex is vacant. It was owner occupied. I believe that its best use is probably somebody who's going to take that step into, into home ownership and live in the lower unit. The upstairs right now has a tenant in there that's paying $1,600 a month in the three bedroom, two bath. They're identical up down duplex. So Matt, that's a, that's a big income coming in every month, $1,600. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, if we can, you know, and, and we'll get into the payment calculations, but, you know, having another $1,600 come in and help you with that payment, um, that's what we're talking about with, uh, with bridging that affordability um, gap. You know, of course, you, you got to you know, be a landlord and, and take that seriously as far as getting your lease signed and, and, uh, and managing getting that payment every single month. But assuming that you put some good tenants in there and have a good relationship with them from the start, um, that, that's that's going to be uh, such a, such a game changer. Sixteen hundred dollars coming in. Uh, we'll see what that does when we calculate our payments here. Yeah. So let's jump to. Uh, well, here I'm going to jump to. This is Matt's app. So tell us a little bit about your app, Matt, and I'm going to uh, put this here into the into the tracker. Yeah. Yeah. So you know what you and I were, were kind of chatting about uh, before we we went live here is that you know. If, if I were to say one thing right now that I would love uh, clients and, and potential homeowners um, out there to be able to do is to empower them with making their own payment calculations. Um, it seems like it's, it's a daunting thing, uh, you know, when you haven't done it much. Um, but once you get the hang of it, it really takes that understanding to the next level about how to compare different properties, about how to really understand what you're kind of getting into. Um, and so, you know, we, we try to provide as many services as we can to, to help that. And so we have an app here um, that you can download on your phone. It's got a calculator that you plug in the purchase price, plug in your taxes, annual taxes, estimate homeowners insurance. And then, you know, I can give you a, a, an interest rate that you can put in. And, uh, and from there, you can start pay, making your payment calculations. And, uh, and, and when on the lending side, we qualify on a maximum payment, not a maximum loan amount. That's really imperative to, uh, to, to the communication um, to make sure that we're all on the same page. Because if we say don't go over a certain amount of monthly payment right here, then when you're calculating your monthly payment, you're going to know um, immediately if that's going to be uh, within the range or not. And, um, and, and yeah, with, with certain properties and, and a competitive market and, and needing to be able to, to consider certain different purchase prices, maybe it's a competitive thing, you got to go a little bit higher. Uh, we want to make sure our clients can make those payment calculations on the, on the spot themselves rather than kind of being in that helpless spot of, oh gosh, I hope Matt calls me back on, on a Saturday night here um, to, to make this payment calculation for me. And, and if I'm available, I'm absolutely wanting to do that. That's part of our, our customer service is, is deals go under contract and happen on the evenings and weekends. But if for some reason that I'm not available, this is something that is, is, is not rocket science that once you get a few reps under your belt um, can really uh, help out on, on, you know, evaluating different properties and, and rank, rank ordering them. Yeah, right. Is, is this market's competitive? And, and if I find a house at 400 that I really like, but it's going to cost me 420 to get it. What's that extra 20,000 doing to my monthly payment? Can I afford it? Does that make sense? 
What does that do for my extra down payment? So being able to kind of manipulate and play with that on my own says, okay, initially this looks good and I can move forward. Let's get the offer submitted. And then I'm going to call Matt Collette. And he's going to confirm that my numbers are correct. It's good. And I yep. can afford this yep. and we're able to move forward. Right. Yep. Absolutely. That's the best way to go about it. You know, and it's all about empowering the client and the understanding because that's the best way to, you know, have the, the least amount of stress and anxiety involved when you're purchasing real estate is when, you know, you know, everything's right out in front of you, you know, you know what the variables that go into your monthly payment, you know, the variables that go into your, you know, um, cash to close, which we'll get into here. And, uh, and once you know those, those couple of things, you can do what, what, uh, is the exciting part, which is find that, that right property for you. Yeah. So let's, let's take this duplex, Matt, and you've, you've plugged in a couple of different scenarios here for us with, uh, the purchase price of 420 different down payment amounts. So this based on the interest rates that we're looking here for the interest rate, the APR, this I'm assuming is owner occupied. This is somebody who's going to live in the house, rent out the upstairs and, and what their, their payment might look like. Yeah. Yeah. Owner occupied rates. And that's, and that's where, you know, if we are comparing that, you know, duplex investment rate of four and a quarter, you know, to, you know, primary rates into the high twos to mid twos, depending on if you want to pay some fees. I mean, you, you can already assume right there that that's going to be a huge difference in, in making this um, a lot better return on your investment um, when the cost of financing is so much lower. Yeah, perfect. So let's let's kind of roll through here this first uh, column. So we've got a purchase price at 420. So Matt, just kind of walk us through. And, and if you need me to drive, I'll drive with this screen share. But, uh, you know, go ahead and take over, kind of walk us through. Yeah, for sure. So let me um, pull up the, the presentation part that you're looking at here so I can I can go line by line with you. Um, so yeah, so you see across the board, 420, 420, 420, that's the purchase price. Um, this software right here is called Mortgage Coach. It's a great software as far as getting down to the nitty gritty of comparing the different scenarios, the different um, ways you can structure your mortgage, different down payment, do you want to buy your interest rate down or not? Do you want to have a shorter term, longer term? Do you want to reinvest, uh, meaning um, add a couple hundred dollars or a hundred dollars add, added to principal each month? This is the software that really breaks that down for us and it's going to show us um, the, the math and show us the, the break even points and the different analysis of the different, different stages after, after the consummation of the mortgage. And so um, 420, you know, we're keeping that consistent across the board there. Um, the loan amount, uh, you know, 10% down for the first two options. Uh, you know, I like to to break down a low rate option and then a low fee option um, because in my estimation, that helps out kind of putting the boundaries of kind of with the client on what the range of what you can look at. You know, the majority of clients I talk to, and I'm not saying that this is a bad thing, but the, the marketing in this industry has, has kind of taken over. Um, you know, they, they think I would need to have the lowest interest rate, the lowest interest rate possible. And and if that's the only variable you're considering, if everything else is the same, yes, lowest interest rate is going to be the better, best, best option. However, it's not. Uh, cost is the other variable that's not talked about as much. How much is it going to cost you to get that interest rate? And, you know, I got a finance background with Steve Boulder. Uh, I got my finance degree and real estate degrees. And, and when I got into this business at 22, I was I was thinking we are doing an injustice, a disservice, excuse me, to uh, uh, our clients if we're not really dialing this in and and not helping them understand that you know the lowest interest rate to brag around the water cooler may not be the best best financial decision for you, and we can we can prove that out with comparing the different options together. It may be the best best option for you, but we want to take that money that you're spending seriously. And, uh, and make sure it is and not just assume that it is. And so um, that's where I like to you know, have a lower interest rate uh, option, but then a higher interest rate option with lower fees where you're, then you're gonna see at the bottom, it's gonna impact your cash to close here. Um, and you can, all right, $74 a month, is that worth bringing $7,000 more to the closing? Well, that's up to each individual client and that they're, uh, with their finances and, and what they would prefer. You know, if you're wanting to kind of extend, you know, the, the real estate investing, then, then maybe you want to preserve some of that capital for that next down payment for that next property. Um, and $75 a month, you know, maybe you, you 
you know, get rid of HBO and don't go to uh, Starbucks a couple times, you know, like that, that could be what that looks like. And, and so when you put it in those terms and the financial breakdowns where you'll see over to probably, if you scroll to the right, um, there's actually savings over, um, you know, a certain amount of months interest paid in, in, in 15 years. And we can calculate these different you know, scenarios compared to each other, um, which really helps you find that sweet spot and find the best structuring loan structuring for you. And um, yeah, so there it is savings yeah. over two months. And, and Matt, you, you touched on something and I want to make sure we don't glaze over it too uh, much is so this property we already talked about exterior probably needs to be painted. We have uh, probably some flooring expenses. So if I don't bring that extra $7,000 to closing to get a lower interest rate, I could put that directly into the property and I've increased the property value, right? It's what we call forced appreciation. The market over time appreciates. And if I improve the property, fresh coat of paint, we're, we're doing new flooring and somebody would pay you more money for that. That's forced appreciation. Now I have, my money going further, even though I took the higher interest rate. That's right. That's right. And you know, I would always say to people for the longest time, and and you know, hindsight again is twenty twenty, but it proved out to be correct. The first interest rate that I quoted when I got into the business in two thousand and seven was six point eight seven five with a point, and so that's buying down your interest rate with a point. That's what that means. Uh, you know, interest rates have progressively gone down ever since then. It's almost like the day I started, they just stair stepped their way down. So now that we're talking. 30 year interest rate from the two. And so in hindsight, it never would have made sense to actually buy your interest rate down too much because even if you, you know, took a higher interest rate, well then interest rates across the board, six, 12 months later, got a lot lower. Well, then you can refinance down to an interest rate that you would have had to pay for um, previously when interest rates were overall a little bit higher. And yeah. so I would always tell, tell people, I always take, you know, the last 13 years, I always took the highest interest rate possible because access to capital was the most important thing for me and minimizing that, ca those, that cash to close. Uh, monthly payment wasn't, uh, wasn't you know, that as, as important because I wanted to keep acquiring more properties and, uh, and I was okay with the cash flow even with the higher payments as far as you know, facilitating some of these duplexes and, and, and a fourplex. And yeah. so when you look at it from, from those terms, you know, the guys, and gals who were bragging about their low interest rates in 2012, you know, that they spent $7,000 to buy down their interest rate. Well, you could, you can get lower than that interest rate today for free. You know? and so um, you really want to think about how you're spending your money and not get caught into that um, uh, chasing the lowest interest rate. I, I, I don't want to hear somebody else had a lower interest rate than I did because also interest rates change each day and we can't lock in, uh, usually, unless you're doing some sort of builder, um, you know, pre-lock deal, uh, you can't lock in until we have a fully executed contract. And so, I mean, with, with interest rates that fluctuate, you know, it, it's really best use of, of your client's time and our client's time to, to dial in the, the best optimal structuring for the mortgage and figure out what that is. Well, especially if I'm going to pursue real estate investing, right? If I'm just buying my house, I'm going to live there for 30 years. I'm never going to refinance. I'm never going to do cash out. That, that's fine. That's one strategy. There's nothing wrong with that approach. Right. And if you want to get into real estate investing, you have to understand that the money really matters at a different level because yeah. that $7,000 or $5,000 or $10,000, whatever that number is, that's important because that's capital to reinvest. And that compounds again over time. So, yeah. Here, here how long does it take us to save seven thousand dollars? You know, if we started right now, I'm going to save seven thousand dollars. You know, how long will that take us? Yeah, you're and the math guy, right? We're we're looking at seventy three or seventy four dollars seventy three cents. How long does that take to get back up to seven seven grand? Mm -hmm. What's your yep. calculator say? Well, right there, you know, we can see the savings over two months, and I can change this, right? You know, twenty four months. So let's just put 24 months in there. You'll see that that changed right there, kind of live. And so, uh, you know, there's there's the low fee option, there's the low rate option. That the low fee option is still is still a better um, deal there after 24 months. And so, you know, after 36 months is right where it looks like the break even point of the the lower rate takes over in this scenario. And now, granted, I want to qualify this because these, you know, interesting. Right. Yep. 
Yep, you got it. Yep, and so I want to qualify this because each each structuring and each day's pricing is a little bit different in the relations to each interest rates to each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's where you want to have a good relationship with your 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 lender and and, t- and have these conversations, have somebody go through this with you and establish with you um, your priorities, your goals, and 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 your your long term strategy as well as short term strategy. And, and and really the the amount of different ways that you can finance your mortgages, like. You, you really owe that time to yourself to, to figure out what the best structuring for, for your specific goals are. And that's where your lender is going to come in and help you do that. And uh, with, with, you know, the government pretty much taking over the entire mortgage industry in 2008 with that last recession, you know, interest rates are pretty consistent across the board. We're, we're selling commodities out here. And so you're, you're, your lender really needs to uh, spend the time with you to, to go through all these, different scenarios, compare different scenarios, compare, you know, your goals and, and help come up with a, uh, a nice strategy for you to uh, get to those goals a lot quicker. And, and this is what the software helps us do. And, and, and we love helping our clients get, get, you know, their strategy together. And, and like you said, you know, some might say, Hey, I just want to buy this house and then forget about buying houses ever again. And that's great. You know, there's plenty of people out there that we help help buy their houses with with them and they're super happy with their their lower monthly payments that they can just rely on um but then there's some you know more more to my side when i was in my 20s you know i wanted to buy as many properties as i could get my hands on at the time because i was thinking this is going to be my retirement and uh and so i was on that other side of the spectrum and then there's everybody in between you know like uh, from all across the different backgrounds and so uh really digging deep with this type of stuff and understanding how long you plan on holding the home, what are your plans for the next home? You know, those types, of, that type of information can really help us come up with a, a, a nice strategy to, to grow your, grow your wealth through real estate and, and also grow your knowledge and understanding of, 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 you know, what we're doing here. Yeah, that's, it's amazing. Right. And, and we're looking at this, if I'm buying a house, so, so Matt, I, and I know you've got the ability to kind of control these. We run two different scenarios for me. I'd like to see what it looks like with FHA down payment minimum, right? We're three and a half percent. And then if I, if I'm a VA buyer or this property happens to qualify for USDA, which our initial search says it might qualify for USDA, which means uh, I, I don't have to be a veteran to actually get something like a zero down. A lot of nuances in, in qualifications. We're not saying yes, it does for sure. Just it might, right? Mm-hmm. So let's look mm-hmm. at USDA and uh, or VA, right? It's zero percent down, and then at, uh, FHA at three and a half percent down. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And just the qual- qualifier here is that you know the the credit score and, and a lot of different things is going to impact your your interest rate quotes, and so mm-hmm. don't take these these terms here as gospel, but it does definitely. Um, really highlight the, the nuances and the difference of cash to close and, uh, and what you can, you can really effectively do if um, you, you are VA and don't have to you know, put any money down. Um, so I'll update here, 30-year FHA. FHA has mortgage insurance. And so mortgage insurance is something that, that VA mortgages do not have. And so that's 85 basis points um, on the loan amount. And so we calculate that here. Um, five. should see some, some things change on your end here. Yeah, it looks like that first column with the FHA yep. is changed. Uh, yeah. And then we're going to go to that second column. We're going to go 30 year VA. Okay. And then we're going to no money down. So those that are following along, these numbers are updating. Uh, so I'm going to start Matt while that's, that's going through just Mm -hmm. kind of roll through the numbers. So it's a $420,000 purchase price. Your loan amounts just over 405, your payments $2,600. So as I'm looking at um, buying a $400,000 house, it's, it's $2,600 really, no matter if I'm buying this duplex or I'm buying a single family home, the advantage Mm -hmm. here with buying the duplex, remember we've got this tenant, who's paying $1,600 a month out of that mortgage. So when we go back here, I am saving $1,600 a month, which means my $400,000 house is now really $1,000 a month. I can take that $1,600 a month and reinvest that into 
paying down the mortgage, uh, putting it into a retirement account, putting it into a college fund account, uh, putting it into another account for a down payment on the next property, because maybe I don't want to live in Keensburg for the next 15 years. Right. Uh, it's not a it's not a bubbling metropolis. It's Keensburg. Um, most people, again, don't know where it's at. So but I don't have to stay there forever, Matt. I could live there for what, 12 months? Yeah, 12 months. You sign an occupancy disclosure on a primary residence that your intent is to, to live there as primary residence for 12 months. And then after that, you are allowed to buy another primary residence. So, um, and then even within that, that 12 month window, we wanna you know, be, be careful. We wanna qualify this, but there are certain qualifying events that allow you to, to buy another primary residence within that 12 month window. Um, Matt, having a baby, getting married, something like that is a qualifying right. event to, to have that legally um, be allowed. So, um, yeah, that's that's a great option as well. So in that, now in the, the next column, this is the VA or USDA option. You can see the, the numbers have kind of changed a little bit. We don't have the same down payment. Your cash to close, these are your closing costs, your certain things that have to be done within the loan. So if you're a VA, a veteran, gosh, for $4,100, you could get into this property. Yeah. $4,100 yeah. down. And I have bought essentially two homes for the price of one. And, and it looks like my payment's even lower than if I had an FHA, Matt. Yeah, it is, you know, because that mortgage insurance is not included. And so that's one of the things that's so awesome about um, VA loans. They, uh, they are the best loans out there and as they should be um, to, to compensate our, our veterans for fighting for our country and, and giving us our freedoms that we have. So um, it's, it's always wonderful to see, you know, when we're able to help out veterans and, and the VA loans because um, getting rid of that mortgage insurance is one of my favorite things. Mortgage insurance is, is kind of my pet peeve. If I, if I can't, if I don't have to charge it, I don't want to charge it because it doesn't even go towards insuring the client. It goes towards insuring, you know, the investor, the lender, the government. So um, yeah, yeah, it's really a game changer when you don't have to pay that mortgage insurance. Yeah, really fantastic. Somebody once told me, and this is a massively successful investor, that VA lending is kind of the uh, uh, that golden ticket for real estate investing because there's so many uh, great options uh, yeah. when it comes to that. So, and mm -hmm. and for this, Matt, if I close on a certain day of the month, right, I, I'm essentially getting almost two months before my first mortgage payment is due. Gosh, I put $4,100 down and I collected $1,600 a month on the month that I close. I collected $1,600 a month or for the month, the next month, the following month, gosh, I've already almost recouped my entire down payment before my first payments even do. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's you know, if there's if there's the right fit and we're able to, um, you know, come together and do all the due diligence on the on the loan side of things and, and implement something like this, it is uh, it is, you know, from a real estate estate investor's lens. It's, it's, it is a game changer. It's the golden ticket. It's the grand slam. I mean, you can't get better than, than a VA loan, something like that. Yeah. So. so so two things, Matt, you and I should have done differently here in our youth. One, we should have skipped going to college, gone to serve our country. Yeah. Um, and we should have been buying duplexes, triplexes, and four units uh, and right. still family homes. That's right. Absolutely. Change two things. So that's what it would have been for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we take the 2387 here for our VA payment per month and we subtract that uh, that 1600, we're down to about $700 a month out of pocket. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know where you can rent a three bedroom apartment at $700 a month. Uh, I remember at one point renting a basement bedroom from a friend of mine uh, and my rent for that basement bedroom was going to be that in itself, right? So yeah, you you and I have probably lived in some, some pretty interesting situations. My senior year in Boulder, I paid three hundred and twenty five dollars a month for a, a shared room with a bunch of in a place with a bunch of random people that I didn't know. We shared a bathroom and a, and a kitchen, and the place smelled like cigarettes, and it was pretty pretty rough, you know. So. Um, Definitely, if uh, if you're getting a lot more than that, you know, it's uh, it's, 
a good situation. And and plus, you know, this does, we're not even ch chatting about the the tax write-offs, the you know appreciation, all that stuff, all that one the wonderful benefits of owning homes. So, well, and if I have if I have an investment property, right? I, I have an investment, and I need to buy uh, supplies for that investment property. You know, talk to your tax advisor. You can write some of those things off because you have that property, right? So, if I need to, uh, you know, go get a hose, I might be able to write that off. Again, talk to your tax advisor. I'm not a tax advisor, um, but you have the ability when you own investment properties to be able to write some things off that you just can't do uh, on your owner occupied home. Yeah. When I, you know, first, first thing I put into my house, I, I grew up with a wood burning fireplace and I, I just love that, you know, in this time of year having a nice fire. And, um, you know, when I bought my house at the end of 2009, there was uh, some energy efficient tax credits for, um, you know, putting in some, a, a wood burning stove and so that was the first uh first thing i put into my house and and it was uh, uh largely i got a ta tax credit for it and so there's a lot of different things like you said that you can you can take a look at um they're always coming and going as far as you know and putting more energy efficient things in your house or updating things and having it uh be a write-off so yeah absolutely it's um it, it's one way to go and again if you're not comfortable with uh, real estate investing, you have questions about real estate investing, that's what we want to bring around this topic is um, shed some light on something that people, truth be told, don't believe that they can do. And this can be done relatively simply when, when you follow a process like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself for sure, but uh, you know, I hear I hear the the term house hacking um, a lot these days, and it's coming from the younger generation. And this is the type of stuff that that we're talking about here, because uh, you know it's it's you know coming from you know almost like hacking a video game, where you know you can get such more favorable terms if you do it right, and if you come up with the right strategy based on your specific um, credit pro profile, your situation as well. And so um, definitely, uh, if you got questions, you know, reach out to Matt reach out to myself and let's have the, have the conversations about it because you never know what those um, conversations could yield. And uh, you know, five, 10 years from now, maybe really feeling really lucky that you, you picked up that phone and, and, you know, saw what you could do. I mean, this is all coming down to what each individual client can do their credit profile. And, and we just want to help you in that, in that process. So. Yeah, absolutely. Home ownership is, um, it, it can be challenging. I, I hear some older uh, generations uh, right now who have uh, kids or grandkids and they're lamenting about how is my, my you know, granddaughter or my son ever going to afford real estate with these prices? Well, gosh, this is a great way to get into it. Uh, yeah. One thing we didn't touch on that, what if, what if I can't afford, right? I'm not approved for a $400,000 house there's already a tenant in this house paying $1,600 a month. Do, does that impact the amount that I could qualify? Yeah. You know, if, if, if we have the right documentation and, and, and everything's in line, you can use that rental income to help you qualify for that as a primary resident. So uh, that's, that's another kind of game changer where, you know, if you're buying a primary residence and, uh, and you're, you know, I, I've, I've actually got the question a lot, well, I'm going to have roommates, but that's, that's great, you know, but it's, single family home and, and we're not able to use that rental income to help you qualify unless there, there's some, some, some little avenues to even do it in, in that situation. But uh, we want to talk about that for sure. And we have to have documentation of the same, um, uh, the same roommate and that per the client being specifically on the lease. And then you have to have the same room roommate moving forward. Um, there are some ways that you can do that, but it's a lot more difficult. Whereas if you're able to buy a duplex, you can you can use that rental income to help you qualify, which is yeah. huge. Yeah. So if I'm approved maybe to 350, the 1600 uh, for the rent may bump that up to where I can now qualify for this 420. So even though I bought more expensive real estate than I intended to, my monthly expenses are actually significantly lower. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, awesome, man. Well, hey, dude, I really appreciate uh, your time this morning. You and I get excited and energized talking about things like this. Uh, uh, big time. 
not everybody loves the numbers, but the numbers are important. Uh, and the overarching story is if this is something you want to pursue, it's absolutely doable. It's just how do we line those those dominoes up for you? So, yeah, yeah. My advice would be to um, to get your ducks in a row. And, you know, utilize Matt, utilize myself, get your questions answered, um, go through the paces, and uh, and then once you've done that, that's that's kind of the homework. That's the the stuff that no one really loves to do. But once you're in a position where you know what you're capable of, I mean, interest rates are so low right now. Where if you're not looking into how, how to qualify for some more or less almost free money if you factor in inflation, um, you know you're not you're not really taking your your um, you know future with building your wealth as seriously as you could because this access to capital is is so important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, again, Matt, thank you so much. Appreciate it. We'll yeah. get back again to talk about future um, future deals. For those that are watching, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, um, they're certainly welcome to reach out to me. I can connect you to Matt. What's the quickest, yeah. easiest, fastest way to connect to you? Yeah, you know what? I probably feel like I'm, I'm on the phone most of the day. And so definitely give me a ring. 303-518-1398 is my number. And, uh, and shoot me an email, matthew.colette at swbc.com or a text, um, all three of those avenues. Uh, Facebook message, what, whatever, whatever works for you. We try to stay all over it and, and, and see if we can set up certain calls and, and time to dig deep with uh, with our clients to make sure that they have all their questions answered. And and that's what you know, like you said, I really get amped up to to do that and help help. Um, you know, it changed my life. It cha I can't say that enough. Real estate and 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 you know, I, I say it all the time, even to this day, that being coming a, a loan officer and, and a mortgage originator at 22 years old. And, uh, and seeing at Wells Fargo at the time and seeing hundreds of credit profiles and what people did right and what people did wrong and, and learning from that, you know, and, and, and taking that knowledge to shape my credit profile moving forward was, was, was something that I just owe all of my wealth, net worth, everything to, you know, and so um, I'm excited to pass that information along um, because it's really not rocket science and, uh, and, and we're here to just, to just give the knowledge. And so um, sometimes I, I kind of you know, sit there and, and wonder, I'm like, man, like, why, why wouldn't people just utilize us? You know, we cost nothing, you know, as far as, you know, until you caught, <laughs> at least on our, our side, you know, until you consummate your deal. And, uh, you know, it's, um, it's something that you would definitely benefit from. So. Yeah, it, it, the information is teachable. It's learnable. Uh, Matt, I know you're passionate and excited about it. So um, again, thank you so much uh, for those tuning in. We'll, we'll bring Matt back in future episodes. If there's something specific you want Matt and I to discuss or go over, uh, don't hesitate to shoot me a message. Let me know um, and go ahead and uh, you know follow our, our uh, Facebook team page where a lot of this information is going to be kept forever uh, and it's going to be housed there on our YouTube channel as well. So Again, Matt, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. And uh, yeah. yeah, you have a, a wonderful November, man. Thanks, man. I really appreciate you having me on, man. It's always good to see you. Good to talk with you, man. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to do it again. And um, happy Super Tuesday to you. <laughs> Sounds good. Take care. All right, we'll see you. Bye-bye.